Hey, what's up? How are you guys doing? I'm uh I'm just walking outside. Wanted to get grabbing Amy, she's following me. It's Amy. Oh, the screen went really bright. Huh? We can do it here. Can you guys see me or am I whited out? You're super white. You're super whited out, man. Okay, hold on a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna restart the deal. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, something's wrong. Hey. There we go. Okay. There you go. Hi. Hi. All right. Hey guys, how you doing? We're good. Where Where are you? We're at our house. This is our home studio and our dining room. Yeah. We set <laughs> I like it, up it. For our new idea that we're we're launching. Because we we wanted to do something constructive, and what a better group of people to start with as our first guests. Um, two people that inspire, and hardworking, hard work ethic, doing things left and right. <laughs> Just uh, you're talking about off. Amy, right? <laughs> I think both of you are pretty drive hard people in this community, and and do other things that are just amazing. And you have three kids, which is not easy either so no uh, we wanted to start off by asking you guys some questions and for people that don't know about creative kids we're a nonprofit here in el paso texas uh, we teach art to kids that are battling cancer kids with disabilities we also create curriculum art education for anybody in the community to use art as a skill set uh, you can look us up online but that's not what we're here to do we're here <laughs> to talk to our friends a little bit about what's going on and some of the thoughts you have about questions that I think the community could gain some knowledge from the two leaders that we have today. So let's uh, start off. If, if you guys are ready, I'll start off with some questions. Listos. Can I just point out first that Andrea and I are matching and that you both are somewhat matching in your uh, <laughs> collared shirts? Yeah. Well, he's, he's got good taste. I think we all, we all know that. So, We're on the same wavelength. There you go. <laughs> all right. So starting off, these are a little complex, so I'm going to explain them. And then we're going to end fun. Probably. And then we have the fun ones at the end. But we're going to start off with some, some thoughts here. Um, either one of you, this is a question for you. There are four lines that I see that are happening in, in the coronavirus area. Uh, and space when it's a huge shift and the world is not the same. And so these lines are the pandemic, the health issues. We have education in a crisis and the economy with people losing their jobs and people at risk. And the community at large that doesn't know what we're doing and where we're going and do I have a job? Is my kid getting everything they need? I just wanted to hear what your thoughts are because they're all happening at once. And it's a very difficult balance for a lot of people. So what are your thoughts on that? Because it's different from anything that's ever happened. It is not only the Great Depression, it's more. It's health, it's family, it's the kids aren't going to school, I gotta do my job. It's all those things at once. So what, what do you think that we're dealing with? I was just talking to the director, uh, CEO of the El Paso Food Bank. And as you all know, they're seeing record demand for food uh, because we have a record number of people who are unemployed and can't feed themselves or feed their families. And the, the line of cars is miles long at the food bank in, in the lower valley. Amy and I volunteered there a couple of times and we, we've really been so appreciative of the staff there the volunteers and the people who are, who are coming for food and uh, are trying to take care of themselves and their families. Well, the CEO told me that she was going to Walgreens to buy um, sunscreen for all her volunteers. She was buying like $100 worth of sunscreen at Walgreens. And um, when she got to the front of the line, um, she explained to the cashier, the woman at the, the cash register, uh, I'm buying all this for volunteers at the food bank. And the woman behind the cash register said, you mean there's a place in El Paso you can go for food? 
And she told the food bank director her story. She said, there are seven people in my family, seven adults, and I'm the only one with a job right now, the only one who's earning a paycheck. And I'm trying to feed everybody on this one paycheck. And I don't know what you earn at the Walgreens counter in El Paso per hour. Um, I hope it's 15 bucks an hour minimum. I, I bet it's a lot less than that. Um, so, you know, you ask about the community. On the one hand, it makes me so fiercely proud of El Paso, the way that we're all coming together to help each other out. On the other hand, I see really desperate need and folks who are struggling, including this woman who's literally on the front lines of the battle against COVID-19. I mean, she's working that cash register, risking her own health, one, to make sure she has a paycheck and she can feed her family, but two, because she knows that it helps all of us get our medications and the sunscreen for the volunteers and anything else that we need there. So I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, want to underscore what I guess we all know, which is there, there's a ton of need and there's a ton of opportunity for us to help right now. And we should all step up in, in every way that we can. You know, Amy might have some thoughts on education because this is something she's been working on her whole life. And she's running the Aurora Home School for the Gifted where we are uh, homeschooling our kids and doing some distance learning. So Amy, I'm gonna let you take that part of it. Yeah, I mean, I think um, it's like you said, unprecedented in so many ways. Um, and that is particularly obvious in education. You just, you, you've transformed the way we're educating kids overnight. Um, and if Beto and I are struggling in our house where both of us are fortunate enough to work from home. We've got decent Wi-Fi. We've got enough devices for the kids to be able to access their distance learning um, when they need to. And if we're having a hard time, you just have to imagine all the families whose circumstances are different from ours and how challenging this must be. Um, and it's, it's you know, how do we address the immediate need of making sure that kids have access uh, and the support that they need, but then also recognizing that this is going to have long term impacts um, and how are the school systems going to adjust so that kids next year, the year after don't have residual gaps and that they're ready to perform at the level they need to going forward. Um, but it's definitely been interesting in our house. We've um, we've split the day, so I'm kind of all hands on deck in the morning, and then scrambling to try to respond to emails and take calls while I'm helping them. Uh, and then Beto takes over in the afternoon, so I've got the designated uh, chunk of time to be able to do that in a more focused way. Um, but not everybody is able to do that. I'll tell you what, it, it helps, and, and this is a credit to Amy. It helps to have structure in our lives, you know, the, the schedule that she just described. Otherwise, I think we would go crazy uh, because there's so much to be anxious about or to worry about. Uh, there are all the uncertainties and, and unknowns, but to know that, you know, at one o'clock, it's, you know, the history lesson. Uh, at two o'clock, we're doing language arts for, for Henry, our, our third grader. Uh, at three o'clock, it's music uh, or art. Um, you know, that, that helps a lot. Yeah, and you know what I, I saw the other day, Amy, on CNN is that teachers also have kids and they come yeah. home and they're trying to do their kids and then make their curriculum. And these are some of the scary things. It's, it's all happening at once in unison. So we really have to come together and figure out how we're gonna get these kids uh, in the place they need to be when they return to school. And so yeah. that's a big question, along with just putting food in their mouths and, and getting ourselves productive and doing yeah. the right thing for our community. So and that tricky it's balance of, of having patience because this is so new for all of our educators. And then also that sense of urgency of wanting to make sure that everyone uh, is where they need to be at the end of this. And um, how do you strike that balance? Right, it's tough. You know, I wonder about too, like the kids that don't have the access, you know, I know EPISD is working hard with the, the hotspots in the city. And so you wonder about what's happening there and this gap that, you know, we're gonna be going on about two months now. And so how do, how do kids recover from that? Because we work a lot with our kids in rural communities in Fabin, and San Eli. And so you always think about what's happening out there and how they're getting what they need. 
talking to one of our instructors that teaches out there, you know, if they do have a phone, the parent has to take it to work because they have to get to work. And so that's the only internet ex access they have. Mm. Um, and so parents or teachers are trying to, um, you know, get actual like paper printed out for them to take to their homes, but they're not getting picked up either. So then you kind of worry like, what is happening out there? And, yeah. What what was the yeah. school district you were telling me about where only a quarter of the students had, had logged in? I think that was in LA. In LA, yeah, something like a quarter uh, of the students had participated in the distance learning in one of the largest school districts in, in the country. Andre, I think for the reasons you just gave, I, I think it's a, a matter of access and um, the inequality and inequity that we have in, in our country, which in so many ways, right, um, this crisis, this pandemic is laying bare. You see uh, black Americans dying at a much higher rate than white Americans. You see some families able to do distance learning for their kids, other families unable to uh, afford to do that. Some people have to work those frontline jobs at, in Texas, the minimum wage is $7.25 an hour, um, risking their lives so that we can have food in the grocery store. So all of this is, is um, is now laid bare for us and we should acknowledge it, recognize it, and then act based on what we're seeing and make those systemic foundational changes going forward so that we, we correct a lot of this. But you're, you're, you're right to ask about community because I think this, this is um, really going to determine how or whether El Paso makes it going forward. So um, Beto has taken on music in our house, and Henry's learning all these, um, well, I don't know if it's multiple songs, but he's Yeah, he's learning. He, he, so he has learned Iron Man. He's okay. learned um, <laughs> Stumped by Minor Threat. He's learned um, Blitzkrieg Bop by the Ramones. And he's okay. learned uh, This Will Be Our Year by the Zombies. So those are his four. That's, that's pretty good that's in good. just three weeks of, of instruction. Um, so what were you gonna say? And so I was supposed to take on art, um, okay. which I am totally inadequately prepared to teach them. Well, I um, so my request to you is, are you gonna do some um, online art classes for the community? We, yeah. we have launched that with our partners with the Boys and Girls Club. Oh, cool. Paso, uh, Paso de Norte uh, Health Foundation. So if you get on our website, you can see I have four of them that we've made. And uh, the kids that we've seen do the project, they really love it. And What's the website? It, well, actually, go to our Creative Kids Inc. YouTube, and we have them uploaded there. And so okay. Steve over here has turned into our, you know, this is our home theater. He makes our, he's a new Bob Ross. Yeah. I'm, yes. I'm like a Mr. Rogers slash pop <laughs> something else. I don't know yet. But uh, That's I'm great. doing my best. But we yeah. do, uh, we, we record them every Tuesday, and then we have a really great friend that's helping us to um, cut them up, make it nice. And then, like this week, Pro Music and Zul Bailey did the background music to it. So it's really all of us trying to come together, be busy and positive and productive. Um, so every Thursday, we upload them to the Creative Kids YouTube channel. Um, so yeah, we have four now, so it's once a week. Cool. And next weekend too, because our kids on Saturdays that come to the gallery. So during the week, you know, we work with kids at Providence, kids in the Colonias, things like that. Um, so this has been kind of like their videos to get to them. Um, and then we have our Saturday kids that come to the gallery for instruction. That's our only class that we charge for. So next weekend, this guy will be starting live classes through care.com slash explore. And so there'll be live classes and anyone can log on um, and he'll be doing them live. Just trying to get people to be creative. And so I have like 200 students I think I'm gonna have all at once <laughs> shot through a camera, which is, you know, that's not necessarily what I like to do. I like to work yeah. with somebody, but we're we're gonna have to do it. You know, it's, it's part of the growth pattern. And, we had to pivot. This is a big pivot, but totally willing to do it. New challenge. Let's do it. So but it's working. there's a great video of a mariachi band from Roma, Texas. It's a high school mariachi band and they're um, practicing and performing via Zoom. And so all, you know, 20, 25 members of the band, each in a different Zoom window playing together and cool. it's, it's just so beautiful. And it, it just shows you 
how indomitable the human spirit is. We are going to find a way to express ourselves and connect with one another, even if we have to do it at a distance. Right. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. We'll try it out. And I should cool. also say our teaching artists, you know, that because we've all been sidelined, like they've been really instrumental in getting Steve the curriculum by Tuesday, and then he digests it and then throws it out to the world. So it's, yeah, it's not one guy <laughs> and one girl. There's a whole team behind us that are working hard, really, really hard to make this happen and, and go through this challenge and come to the other side. So thank you guys. I know you're watching. Thank you for helping us out. <laughs> Um, if you guys don't mind, I got another question for you. Yeah, hit All us. Right. Um, so we were just wondering what strategies do you see coming out of this and how we as people can remain positive, productive, and purposeful in this time? Because I know like myself, I go through waves of anxiety and panic and then I'm okay and then I'm not. And so I don't know if you guys have any advice because it seems like this is not going to end anytime soon. I know this morning, Beth, though, you talked about your 15 minutes on the porch. It gives yeah. you a little bit of time to breathe. And I, I, I'm going to take your uh, advice on that. I haven't been doing that, but I'm going to do that. It sounds like you know, good. We, we have found just, uh, we're on the porch right now, but uh, being out here, uh, we, we pre-pandemic, it was just incidentally or occasionally or randomly that we'd be out here. Now we're out here every morning at the start of the day and every evening at the close. And we're seeing our neighbors and we're talking to them and we're actually having human being to human being conversations, not, not on Twitter and not on a screen, um, but just, you know, at six feet distance, right? But still able to connect with one another, you know, more than we have in the, you know, three or four years that we've lived in, in this house, um, getting to know our neighbors a little bit better. Uh, that, that's helped us I think keep our sanity. Um, we're both exercising, um, and then and then we'll exercise with our kids. So Amy's got a a PE class that she has us in every morning from <laughs> eight to nine. And so this morning I led a little run uh, through the neighborhood uh, with our kids, and then we came back and we went on YouTube and found a yoga class. And neither none of us have ever done yoga before, and so. And I'm not even sure you could call what we were doing yoga. Yeah, we were like splayed out on the floor in different weird positions and groaning. But, um, you know, I think that helps. I think for me, having a beer at the end of the day is, is really nice, you know. Um, and, and to do that on the porch with Amy has, has just been wonderful. Um, and then, and then I, I can't stress enough, and this is me because I'm OCD and, and maybe type A, but having structure uh, is, is so helpful for my head, knowing that, all right, school starts at 8 a.m. and school ends at, at 3.30, and this is what we're doing at, at each part during the day. If we didn't do that, I think the days would just melt into each other and uh, make it much harder to, to, to keep, uh, yeah, keep our sanity. What, what, what are yeah. your thoughts? So this is new for me, but, um, and maybe in response to having neglected our yard for the last four years, <laughs> yeah. but I have really enjoyed, that's kind of my break from everyone. Uh, it's just going outside and pulling weeds and working in the yard. And I feel like I'm getting exercise, I'm getting the, the sun, and then also yeah. a little um, separation from <laughs> yeah. kids. Well, if you guys want to learn yoga, my little sister in El pa uh, San, Antonio. San Antonio, she has like nine yoga classes and she's put them online. So oh, I'll send cool. them to you. Yeah, you can the, check them out. The union, they're all on YouTube right now. Is, is really she nice? Yes, yeah, she's very she's nice. nice. She'll be nice. Because we, we zoomed into a live yoga class. <laughs> last week. Last week. And it was, a, it was a good friend who said, hey, I, I've got this. My brother's a yoga instructor in California. Zoom into his class. And it was like advanced, crazy, like no. one armed handstand, your legs crossed. And he, and he kept saying, because oh, could, he could see our names on the bottom of the screen, he'd be like, O'Rourke, you're doing that wrong. O'Rourke, that's the wrong <laughs> position. O'Rourke. So wow. After about an hour, we had to turn it off because it was, and it was, he was doing it in front of my kids. So I just felt <laughs> humiliated. I'd never done yoga before. So, um, so if she's nice, we want in on her class. Okay. Nice. And then they have, they have classes for the little guys too. They're really good. The butterfly okay. and things like that. So I'll send it to you. It's the union San Antonio. 
But I was going to tell you, you're, you're pulling weeds. I have discovered the art of squeegeeing windows. I can do oh. it. It's contact lens. I can come over. All, yeah, I spent all day Saturday, five hours, squeegeeing our windows. Yeah. I mean, spotless, <laughs> spotless windows. But whatever it takes, right? What was it? Did it all go to waste then? Because the, then the wind picked up on Sunday yeah, and Monday? Yeah, Sunday. Yeah, I can't talk about that. That's all right. <laughs> you can do it every day if she wants. You know, just relax. I'm going to do it again this Saturday. But then right. I think to, oh. to go back to your question, yeah, you know, Beto and I have been volunteering at the food bank and um, talk to people that are volunteering to make face shields and PPE and, you know, whatever way you can find to help right now, I think just gives you so much purpose um, and yeah. also helps you cope with just the really difficult situation we're in. Yeah, because that was going to be my next question, because I know people are writing in, like, what can they do to help? Because uh, I know you've been big on volunteering with the food bank, so what can people do right now that feel helpless or, you know, even it doesn't have to be monetary, you know, monetarily done, or like, what, what do you have for people that can help? Yeah, our, we're, we're big on the food banks. You can, you know, neither of us are medical professionals, and, and there's no, no value we can add in a hospital or yeah. a clinic. Um, we're not epidemiologists. Um, what we can do is provide free labor at the food bank, which for us yesterday meant uh, working on an assembly line where you're kept six feet apart from the other volunteers. You're wearing a, a mask, gloves. They check your temperature when you walk in to make sure you don't have a fever. And if you do, you're not allowed to come in. Um, and then you're on this assembly line and a box comes through and you know, my station is to uh, wrap up five tomatoes, place them in the box, move the box along. And then when we ran out of tomatoes, it was jalapeno peppers. And when we ran out of jalapeno peppers, it was eggplant, which I hate eggplant. So I was not <laughs> tempted by that, but I was tempted by everything else. Amy had, uh, did you have tomatillo? Uh -huh. Onions. Onions. And you know, you're doing that for uh, four and a half hours. Uh, and you're, when your you know, box of onions or tomatoes is, is out, you go to a pallet, pick up more, you're making conversation with other people. So, you know, imagine this, you know, uh, you've been in the house like so many weeks without seeing anybody at your house full of people at six foot distance. Um, and you're actually having conversations and meeting people. So the, the guy who was managing us, the volunteer manager, was a retiree from the U.S. Army which you could tell because he was like, fucking yeah. get in shape. Like, you know, this is the objective. Yeah. Go do O'Rourke, are you slacking off? So he, he kept <laughs> us on our toes and kept us filling those boxes. Uh, there, were, there were folks from the National Guard, met a guy who'd gone to Isleta High School, met a woman who was a bartender and got fired because the bar she served at college dropout on Cincinnati uh, had to let her go. And so she's now volunteering at, at the food bank, met a nurse who was also let go, which is kind of ironic. You think we need these health workers right now, but they aren't scheduling surgeries and there wasn't anything for her to do at her clinic. And so they had to let her go, which really sucks. But what's amazing is that instead of sitting at home and just being pissed off, which I could understand, she got off her ass, went into the food bank and was volunteering right next to us. So, you, you really get inspired by the people you meet. And as Amy said, this feeling of purpose and function, like this is what I should be doing as a human being right now is helping other people out. And this is a way to do it. So um, yeah, we, we, if you can, you know, if you're of the right age, you don't have any underlying conditions, go volunteer at that food bank. If you can't volunteer in person, um, we're hosting uh, phone banks that, that seek to raise volunteers. And you can go to our site, it's, it's poweredbypeople.org and sign up for a phone bank. If you have the means to donate, you can donate. And if you can't do any of that stuff and you need the food, then by all means, go down to that food bank and get the food. It's there for you. Uh, and, and we all want to help you get that. So that, that would be our vote, unless you, anything you want to add, Amy, in yeah. terms of volunteering? No, I mean, it's been amazing. I went in a little aggressive yesterday. I don't like to be like out Amy is super competitive. Bye. <laughs> men who think they can lift more than I can. And so I went in and like picked up a giant box. Maybe I should have warmed up a little bit. So I've been like moving like this all day, super <laughs> sore. <laughs> you threw the disc. 
<laughs> well, Dre and I have a surprise for you guys because we've been watching you in the community. And uh, we called our friends at Southwest Airlines and they're sending us pallets of snacks and drinks. For the food bank. For the food bank. So right on. Surprise. Yeah. We'll get them over to you guys. Way to go. Hopefully we can help you out a little bit out there. But we are so proud of everything you guys do. And it's unbelievable to see your energy, your passion. You're so inspiring. Uh, oh, you, you we guys have some, as well. <laughs> we have some fun questions now we're going to get to. Let's right? hit it. OK. So we, this is the quarantine cues, five quick questions. We just want to know what you all are listening to, or if you could have a song and repeat, what it would be during quarantine. Wow. Um, That's tough. Huh? <laughs> so I, I saw, I don't know if she's still watching, I saw Kathy Valentine uh, on the feed. I've been following her. Um, I'm going to order her new biography. Um, I love listening to her. Um, Neil Young has been stuck in my head. Um, uh, been listening to a lot of Neil Young, the band. Who, who have you been listening to? So this is super random, but I've been listening to Blaze Foley. Yeah, that's um, not random. That's cool. And I just love his Clay Pigeon song. And so that seems to be my go-to when I'm out in the yard or out on a walk, is just putting his list on uh, shuffle. Nice. Well, what do you all listen to? Muppet Babies and, uh, <laughs> yeah, I have a pig, uh, who let the dogs out, stuff like that, you know. Right. No, uh, well, what I like to listen to right now that soothes me is a symphony. I mean, I just like hearing strings and, you know, in the morning for me, a cup of coffee and one or two of those songs is great. We just had yeah. our little one is into the Nutcracker. We have the Nutcracker going right now. Yeah. Kind of soothing. Whatever. <laughs> But next question. You kind of already answered it, but your quarantine routine, I know you kind of went through it already. So we'll skip it. Unless we'll you have something else unless you want to talk about. Want to divulge the guilty pleasure of our... Oh, yeah. One, one guilty pleasure. Amy's going to tell you about it. Okay. This is slightly embarrassing to admit. No. But we stumbled upon this show called The Arrow that oh, yeah. is not particularly all that good, but... Right good enough for all of us to be into it. And so every night after dinner, almost every night, um, we've been watching an episode of The Arrow and there's like a hundred episodes. So yeah. well, actually, it'll name, last the- His name was Hawkeye. It was in a comic book. I used to collect that comic book. So that's where Arrow comes from. So- And, and Steven and Andrea, you should comment on this. I mean, but, but what makes art good? I mean, the fact that this show we've watched 37 episodes of it and and we're watching it every night and it brings our family together yeah. and um even if we're like mocking it as we yeah it. yeah we, we make some fun <laughs> but we also are engrossed in there's like 17 different subplots of different loves and affairs and it's kind of like a soap opera people die and come back to life um but it's it's been interesting that's that's our guilty pleasure yeah well the reason why it works what art does is it invokes a feeling so if you guys are getting the feeling of laughter and you joke and you look at this, that that's good art. If yeah. it makes you feel sad, it's good art. Anything that stirs inside of you and creates something means it's affecting your life. So if it makes you happy or sad, that's good art. If it's in between or all the feelings, it's good art. So that's I like that definition. definition. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, any one. favorite recipe you're making or discovered a new one while in the queue? So many. Um, I made the best French fries in the world last night. And it, you all may or may not know this, but the, the secret is the double fry. You fry it once where it starts, the, the potatoes start to, to turn brown. Take them out, let them rest for an hour, and then fry them again for a minute in peanut oil or we used canola oil last night. And they were so good and you know it stuff just tastes better when you made it yourself and and when you're eating it together as a family so that's been a major breakthrough there's been some cookie baking uh, my mom has this lemon chicken recipe with lemon onions garlic um, and all these seasonings and I've been working on that but have yet to crack the code I haven't I haven't nailed that one yet what what have you uh, 
banana bread. You've been making some banana bread. Yeah, banana bread, quiche. I would say the one thing that is new for us um, is we started making salads again. So two weeks ago, we subscribed to a farm box from, I think it's Desert Spoon. Here in El Paso, yeah. Um, yeah. And so they send you, you know, whatever is being produced at the moment, harvested from local farmers. And so we got all of these cool leafy greens um, in our farm box that inspired us to start making salads again, which has been nice. Oh, that's good. Super cool. Awesome. And like like our friend Norbert at Tatla, he's got a yes. bag. And yeah. he served up a meal, I got to tell you, that was dynamite. We got to do that Friday. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you got to put every week it's something different and it doesn't disappoint. And it lasts like three. It doesn't look like a lot, but it's a ton. Like we still have, we're on like day four. Yeah. And, and it forces uh, you to, to try cooking new things because it's sometimes yeah. stuff you wouldn't have bought otherwise. Yep. And I helped out my buddy. So it's yeah. a two for one, and I like totally. it. Yeah. Last night I perfected, I'm going to get hate mail for this, Chico's Tacos, my homemade recipe. Really? I got, down. I got it down. I made the Chico sauce and the blabas. And speaking of French fries, I did the crinkle cut. Nice. Way to go. <laughs> Very proud of you. Last question. So what memory have you had with your family that you think you would not have otherwise if you weren't in quarantine? Very quarantine. We took this, I'll, I'll give one, and then it gives Amy some time to, to think of one, unless you have one ready Don't to go. Use, use um, so this, but before all the trails were closed, in fact, they were closed in El Paso, but they were still open in Doña Ana County in New Mexico. And so, you know, we drove 30, 40 minutes to this trail called the Sierra Vista Trail. Um, it's just below Dripping Springs. And uh, we packed, uh, a little picnic, it had a thermos of wine, had uh, cookies, treats, sandwiches that Amy had made for, for us and the kids. And, you know, we're still in the Chihuahuan desert and it's, it was pretty hot, but we came into this little arroyo uh, that was next to this gigantic rock outcropping. And it was just, it was this beautiful oasis. And I remember the kids were all kind of perched on this boulder, eating their sandwiches asking us how much longer we'd have to be out there. Um, and if we were gonna go any further, if we could turn back now. And then Amy and I were, you know, having a, a glass of wine and uh, a thermos of wine and eating our sandwiches. And then there was this moment where it was just peace. And, uh, and we just kind of recognized, all right, I did just how lucky we are. And I am this family and this, this place that we live in that is so magical and the fact that we, we all get to be together right now and that we're, we're health, healthy and, and we're safe. So that, that was, that's something that I remember and I think we'll continue to remember uh, about this. How about you? Um, I think beyond like Beto and I's nightly um, drink on the porch coupled with his homemade guacamole that is amazing. Totally I would good. say another thing that will stick is that um, at the beginning of the quarantine when there was a run on eggs, Molly, who has been asking for chickens for years. Who, who is 11 years old. Yeah, Molly is 11. Um, okay. Made this very strong argument that we needed chickens now in case it was gonna become more and more difficult to get eggs. So we now have four super cute baby chicks um, wow. that we've been hanging out with a lot outside and just, you know, getting to see Molly and even Henry really, um, enjoy that just incredibly special experience has been really fun. So you, wow. I hope you named one of them Nacho. <laughs> one should be a Nacho or, you know, un Pepe, it's, un Pepe. Algo. It's Fluffy, okay. Luna. Chipmunk. Chipmunk. Penguin. And penguin. Oh, wow. You, you say penguin? <laughs> or penguin? What What do you mean? I said penguin. Penguin? No, penguin. Penguin? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I That's love good. that. Awesome. <laughs> okay. So with that, we thank our good friends. I know you're busy. I know. Thank you so much. Oh, it's good to see you both. Thanks for having us on. I know. Yeah. Hopefully I'll see you on the trail soon. I miss my morning Hikes that, that was the saddest day for me was when we couldn't get back on the mountains. 
Yeah. I know, I, the day before, I took my last hike not knowing it would be, and I took the most beautiful picture of the canyons, and I had posted it, and then the next day, who knew? But hopefully we all get back. I just, I just want to thank you guys for uplifting people. Yeah. I know they tuned in, they learned, and we're all people going through something, and it's going to be good when we come out of it. Yeah. That's right. We wanted to showcase you guys for everything you do and how inspiring you are to us. So thank you so much for your time and uh, be safe and hopefully we we'll see you guys soon. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. You. Bye. Love you all. Bye. See you later. Bye.